Okay, so do you think we're in a full-blown bear market? Because, I mean, the stock market has done horrible this week. Yes. So you think it's a full-blown bear market? Um, there's no... I think we've been in a bear market. Right. I was still kind of thinking... I think I thought we were in a bear market about March. But it took me some time to, I guess, accept it. <laughs> I was thinking it, I think, like, around Ukraine or maybe a few weeks before that. Or yeah, you, Ukraine is not. Ukraine has made things worse for sure. Ukraine. And, and whenever Russia. Ukraine happened, that's when I knew. I'm like, okay, it's it's, it's bear over, time. Basically. I mean, Bitcoin price right now is thirty four thousand, which is not the lowest we've seen in a while. So it's not totally bottomed out yet. I don't think if it if we are in a full bull and bear market, I mean, I think Bitcoin could go down as low as twenty thousand potentially. Um, yeah. Which that to me is a big opportunity for people. Um, yeah, it's just at a discount. Yeah, it's at a huge, like a huge discount. Um, that would be kind of exciting, honestly. Um, do you think that? I mean, and also uh, the Nasdaq went down like twenty percent the past month. I forgot to mention that, which is insanity. A fifth of the value gone. Do you think that the midterms will help the the market gain a little traction? Or do you think it'll hurt it? I think if um, Republicans win, I think it'll probably help it. Right. And that'll probably signal to the market, um, you know, more, you know, company-centric type stuff will get proposed. Less, yeah. Um, you know, other things. Um, I, mean, I don't know if it'll have much of an impact, though. I don't think it'll have an impact right away. But I think it will help over time. Yeah. Honestly, it might not even do anything. It might just be totally independent of it. I, I don't know. It could be. Yeah. It could just be all. I don't think it's totally independent, but I think it would definitely help a little. But if Republicans. It seems like win, presidential but, elections have more of an impact. Yeah. If Republicans win this time and Republicans win in 2024, I think we'll see a huge rally. I agree. But we might have a big rally before then. I would think we would, but you never know. We might we might yeah. be on these lower lows for a while. Um, I guess I guess that's well. I'll ask that in a second. Do you think um, the war in Ukraine? Do you think it's going to end anytime soon? What is your gut feeling lately? Um, I mean, the last I heard that they had stopped attacking uh, the capital. Right. And we're like holding. Yeah. Um. That seems good, but I mean, they could just be like regrouping and gonna go back in. But yeah, reorganizing. Yeah, they could be reorganizing. But that to me, that seems maybe they're having some sort of peace talks or something. I, I don't know. But I think it's coming closer to an end. Do you think that would spark the rally if the war in Ukraine ended? I know we'd have a little rally, and we probably would stop. I think the bottom would definitely be signaled if the war in Ukraine ended, in my opinion. I think but it could, yeah. Do you think it would spark a bull market again? Or do you think it would just No, be, I don't think it would spark a bull market. But do you think that would kind of signal, hey, we're probably at the bottom here? Yeah. Yeah, that's. I think so, too. I don't think it would spark a bull, a bull market either. But I think it would. We'd probably recover a little bit, and that's probably... Like, we'll be trading sideways for a while, basically. Um, yeah. When do you think a bull market will start again? Or I know it's hard to know, but what do you think? If you had to guess. I think if a Republican wins, I think it would start. Okay, if the midterm, if the Republicans win the midterms and then they win the presidency, I think that would start a bull market. So, so you, think, potentially, you think we have to wait two more years? Potentially, yes. Two and a half more years, I guess, technically. Yeah. Yeah. To get a full blown bull market, it might take that long. Yeah. But, I mean, if you believe in the market and you believe in um, long term growth, then you, you should be looking at this as a, you know, stocks are on sale and you should be loading up. Yeah. Them. You got to do, you got to go against the grain, go against the fear, and, um, you know, be courageous and, and keep buying. 
That's what you have to do. If you want to make money, I mean, or you can just sell everything and say, screw it, I don't believe in this anymore. I, I don't mean, think it's smart, but... If, if you're planning on investing for 20 years, the, the price in 20 years is going to be higher than it is now. Like, that's just how it works. Right. And so the price today may be lower than it was last year, um, but it's probably not going to be at this price again for a long time. <laughs> so you're better off buying it. This is probably the lowest price that it will be at ever again. Yeah. I think. I think this is basically how it works. You know, you get really high highs and then you go down and you correct. You know, it, you very rarely go all the way down on the last bear market side. Yeah. Like, that's not really going to happen. Um, yeah, I think you're, I th that's kind of what I'm thinking as well. Okay, so how would you invest right now? How are you investing? Like, what um, would you recommend? I mean, right now what I'm doing is um, if there is a stock that I like and that I believe in long term and they're, like, having, like, really bad days, I, that's when I buy them because the, it's like a discount. And if there's not any stocks like that that you – can that you have any, or, that you don't right. feel good about that you, that you don't right. believe in then, fully. Then I just do like conservative stuff, like utilities and stuff like that. Okay, yeah, I think um, I'm sort of uh, yeah, I'm buying when stuff is down if it's stuff that I believe in, and and I'm also wading into like the QQQ, you know the um, yeah the um, Oh God, well, I can't think. The ETFs, the, the, the indexes, indices or whatever you want to call them. So basically how I'm doing is about 50-50 into stuff I believe in that are down and into indices, essentially. Yeah, sounds like a good strategy. Yeah, I did want to point out one fund and see what you thought. It's the ARK investment price. So it's been been killed lately. So I'm looking at the past five years here. I mean, it was it's, it's, it's doing better than it did in 2017, right? Like it's done pretty... It's, it's about where it was in 2018 now. And it dropped a lot in 2020 and then just boom. It shot up so fast. You know, during that last bull run we had after the yeah. pandemic kind of got settled. I mean, it went all the way up to $150, and now it's at $45. It's back to the valuation it was, you know, 2018, 2019. So yeah. I've been buying some of this as well because it's still up 80% over the course of five years. Even though it's down half or more, or no, a third, it's still up right. a lot. So I think this is just being oversold at this point. What What is um, in this ETF? They actually picked uh, Tesla. One of the reasons why they did so well is because they picked Tesla. So before any other indexes were, they're um, they're kind of like the closest thing to a venture capital fund in the stock market. So if I go to their web, and we talked about them before, Ark Investments. Remember? Yeah, I remember us talking about them. So yeah, we'll take it. Let's take a look at. The, they have a uh, like a number of different uh, ETFs. Let me go to do, 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 do. Maybe I should do this arc fund. Here we go. So this is their main flagship one, it's Arc K, Arc Innovation ETF. So they you get kind of a wide range of what they're wanting to do. They have more focused funds, some that are in robotics, some that are in space, and more focused ones. 3D printing is one too. Um so those are even more risky, I would say, because it's very specific. So you have to really believe in that particular market. But their biggest weight is still in Tesla. But they bought it way earlier, which is why I think they had the meteoric rise. Their second is Roku, which I think that's kind of questionable. But Zoom, which is very popular. Coinbase, Block, which is Square, that's the cash app. Exact Sciences, which I think they're doing innovative things in genomics. Teladoc, which is like a healthcare company that's more into the um, 
the video stuff and trying to make it more, um, you know, you don't have to go to the daughter's office as much. Unity software. Right. I don't know if that has anything to do with the gaming thing. I'm it really seems sure. like it. I don't it's know. Really, I'm not sure what these other two companies are, to be honest. And they have more than that, though. But yeah, that's like the top ones. It definitely seems like a, a, a riskier ETF. Oh, yeah. I don't think you should just buy this ETF, but I right. think it's what reason. One reason why I like it is because it's got companies that you don't see in the other indices. Yeah, that is a a unique grouping. Let me actually open up. Let me tr let me try to get their whole th the ETF up. Okay, so I got their whole ETF. Oh yeah, I got DraftKings. It's kind of interesting. Shopify, Spotify. I like Spotify. Um, Robin Hood. I like Robin Hood. Roblox. They got some of the standards too. What was standard one do you see? I must mean, read it. Which one did you see? I'm sorry. I thought I saw uh, Meta, but maybe I misread They it. used to have Meta. They actually sold Meta a while ago because they wanted to invest in some other stuff. So they, they lean more risky. They lean more risky, yeah. but they're weight have most heavily weighted in Tesla, which is always good, um, especially nowadays. And they're the ones who are predicting it to five X over the next uh, five years, so that they do a lot of research into each one. And they're they're very um, each of the people that do this research into them, they're not like MBAs. They actually are coming from the the place that they're researching. Like they have genomic people. Who are researching genomics and they have different um folks who are very specific to each one um researching each of these companies which i think is a good thing yeah so that, that yeah i mean when also when you see that performance i'm not saying that'll happen again but it's definitely oversold i feel like yeah it, it seems that way that's why i'm i'm putting some in here too like instead of me buying more Robin Hood, which I believe in in the long run, I've been buying some of this because it's like risky, but less risky than that because you're getting a lot of other stuff. So it's sort of like a fund if you want to have, because like most all of this is not in the standard stuff, you know. So you're getting a lot of, if you look at like QQQ and you look at, you know, pretty much every single other index, they're basically the same. Which, yeah. I kind of so if you're buying funds, you basically could just buy QQQ or buy any the other funds. They're all about the same. So I guess that's why I kind of like this because you get a little more risk in case there is that huge parabolic movement. Um, it gives you some more potential upside. You get exposure some, to to those that potential. Right, because you're not getting that in the QQQs. You're not getting that in the other funds at all. Yeah. So just something I've. That's that's an interesting uh, ETF. Yeah. And they have other ones, too, that are more specific. Those are more risky, I would say. So you probably just want to get the full-scale one because it, it's broad. It's not just financial. It's not just, you know, so it's genomics, which you can get even more specific, which is probably more risky. 